We are here talking about a completely new way to do storage. It's not often that I have uh, the, the privilege of discussing something really, really different. Uh, I feel like saying, and now for something completely different. So I'm here with <laughs> yeah. Bryce LeBlanc from Datrium. Traditionally, when we do storage, we've done one of two things. We've done either the network, uh, you know, an all-flash array, and again, when I say traditionally, I mean like in the last year, uh, an all-flash array, or we've put memory or flash up in the server, right? Like the, the hyperconverged hyper approach, right? Yeah, sure. But in both cases, you have the capacity uh, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, performance together, right? So you mm -hmm. always have the, the, it's either, you know, we compute the RAID and store the RAID, and this is where we store the data. Same thing here. You guys are doing something completely different. So why don't you tell me about that? Yeah, it's exactly right. Uh, we Fundamentally, we wanted to change the entire way that storage was was architected. And to do that, we had to decouple the performance away from the capacity, okay? So what we're uh, creating is is an elastic storage for uh, and what we're what we're creating is an open converged architecture. So it's a completely new term. OCI. And there you go. OCI. Exactly. Good luck. Good luck uh, Perfect. Yeah. Having that catch on. <laughs> exactly. So in our OCI, what we've done is the performance now is at the host layer and the mm -hmm. durable and the durable layer of the capacity is, is down on an appliance. Doing that allows us to leverage uh, resources that are already available to us. Uh, customers already have CPU that's available that they're not using, average is about 28%. Uh, there's a couple of dry bays that we can throw some flash into. Now we've got the makings of the storage controller up here. We keep the durability down here. We allow the customers to bring rack mount servers, blade servers, doesn't matter whatever CPU they have, it really makes zero different stuff, and so that opens up the performance aspect of things, so that they can leverage that, that, that those resources, and it becomes very flexible and inexpensive, since we don't charge for anything at the host layer. So it's it's, it's a very inexpensive route to go for a performance layer. If I understand correctly, mm -hmm. so I buy some flash, yeah. right, and I put them in the hard drive bays that are probably empty, probably in, empty. in my storage arrays or in my servers. And you're going to use the excess compute capacity that I have here to compute things like uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, the, the RAID, RAID and, and deduplication, yeah, compression, right. anything right. that a traditional controller did for the I/O performance. That's the way to look at that. And then you're going to write uh, either. I don't know if it, if you think of this as a copy and that as the original, or <laughs> I don't know. If, you know, because you've got two copies. Yeah, right? exactly. So if the durability is now decoupled from the performance, the durability will be down here. Mm -hmm. All of the writes will now be sent to NVRAM right. down on the net shelf. Mm -hmm. And then the reads, the read copy, so 80% of the I.O. is now coming off of the bus, off of flash, that are very, very quick, right? Sub-millisecond latency, microsecond latency, really, off of, the, off of the bus. And that's really where flash belongs, right? Hi uh, Hyperconverged solutions, they taught us that this is where the flash belongs, not across the network where latency right. is, is incurring. Really what we've done is we've created an answer to rigid and expensive architectures mm -hmm. by cr making it flexible, using what they already have, and, and making it very in, in, inexpensive to, to implement and, and monitor and manage. And as far as uh, complexity is concerned, we, we really automated the whole thing, and this, everything is tied together. So the metadata that runs off of the flash and the, the writes, the reads all together, is uh, is a nice cohesive package. Mm -hmm. So all of it's automated, uh, and uh, upgrades are, are very easy, one click upgrades, those types of things. So the complexity of this in, in managing your storage like VMs. So you don't really manage storage anymore. There's no LUNs, there's no volume, there's no nothing like that. You just simply vMotion things around, and that's how you manage your performance. For perform so complexity really comes off the table. And of course, having you know the SSDs at the host, the CPU driving all that performance, I mean, that's really the engine of right. this thing. And then the, uh, the SSDs are kind of the NOS tank, if you really want right. to look at it that way. But your NOS tank is huge. We can fit up to 100 terabytes of effective cache per ESXi host. Yeah, because this, is this any different than a typical cache approach? Yeah. Well, it's a typical read cache approach, except for mm -hmm. the fact that it's really at the host layer, and these things are all driven together. So if you were to do a snapshot, or if you were to uh, uh, do a uh, compression, dedupe Application. We do compression and dedupe mm -hmm. on the flash on the host. So right. now we get a, a much better efficiency, effective capacity on the flash on the host. But we also do global dedupe 
down here, and they all work together, right? So now we've got the deduplication fingerprint that can, uh, that can be shared amongst all of the components, and that's really brought about by something that we call diesel. Stands for distributed, executable, shared logs. In terms of comparing this to, to a traditional cache approach, uh, what I think I remember hearing you say before is that the amount of cache yeah. that you have is, is, is the 100%. Yeah. Right? That I'm not, because the traditional cache approach would only have like 10% of exactly. flash up here, right? That's right. And we, that's our architecture, is if we can get an overabundance of cache, because cache is cheap and, and abundant these days, then, then we'll get guaranteed 100% cache hit ratio. And that really answers to the whole, and thank you, <laughs> and answers to the latency question, right? Now we have all of our blocks up at the host. There's no latency incurred to go across the bus to get to it. Now, one of the things I remember when I when I heard about your architecture, my, my first yeah, but was mm -hmm. was if if you're writing, because my understanding is you don't act the right until it's written down here. Correct. So if that's the case, how does that not have the same latency as a traditional all flash array architecture? Yeah. The right latency is going to NVRAM on the net shelf, mm -hmm. so it's very similar to any other traditional storage that has NVRAM as the acknowledgement back. Right. Okay. So there's that aspect of it, but now we've also removed 80% of the I/O off of the network, which is the reads that okay. is now sitting up at the host, and we don't have to traverse that 10 gig network to get there. And then just one last thing, since we don't have protection up here mm -hmm. or durability, whatever you want to call it, what happens when one of these drives goes away? So when we lose an SSD. Basically, we just have to go to the net shelf. This is the truth of all data. Repopulate it, and you're good to go. All right. Well, that covers that. <laughs> all right. And uh, thanks again. I'm W. Curtis Preston from Storage Switzerland.